Are you new to YouTube? Don't worry, I'm going to give you the cliff notes to get you started. That's upload a YouTube video. There is more to uploading a YouTube video than you realize. Uploading a YouTube video with the right title, description, tags, and a lot of due diligence will help you stand out, you propel your video better, and you get more views and subscribers in the long run, leading to long-term channel growth. That's why today I'm here to tackle the very easy sounding how to upload a YouTube video in a masterclass that hopefully helps you tackle every fine detail and understand every important tweak that can help you stand above the rest. Now, first of all, today, as you can see here, this is my YouTube dashboard. Everyone's seen this before. You upload videos here. It gives you your statistics of how well your videos have done recently and how well you're growing. And if you've been uploading content on YouTube for a while, then you know the next step. You go to the top corner, you click the upload video option, and here you can either select a video from your hard drive or drag and drop. I'm selecting files and I'm using this one here, and then it will upload using my incredibly terrible internet connection at the moment because I'm running on a mobile 4G internet connection because I don't have a wired internet connection. Long story, it's all about moving offices. Video up here if you wanna see the tour. But you'll see here, I've uploaded the video. Now, there's a myth that if you upload it with a title already that it's gonna get you meta tag data and you're gonna get more views because the words of the video are in the, the title of the file. That's an old myth. But this video is all about how to write comments in the comment section, bold, italic, strike through that kind of thing. Now that's a good place to start. I'll have a look at this title, how to write bold, italic, and strike through comments on YouTube. That's 65 characters in length. I personally would try and hope to get it down to around about 50. Why? Because on mobile device, anything after 50, you get that dot, dot, dot on a mobile screen. Now that title does explain exactly what that video is about. So what I'm going to do is I'm gonna copy that into the top of my description. Right? But then I'm gonna go back and try and slim down the title. See, now I've got it to 51 characters. If I remove the exclamation mark, then it's more. 50, 50 bold italics and strike through comments on YouTube. Exactly what that video is about, condensed to 50 characters. Perfect. Now if I'm uploading using YouTube Shorts, then I'll try and make it even shorter, 40 characters in length, because then, once again, on the YouTube Shorts, it shows the first 40 characters, and then dot, dot, dot. Now as you can see, I've got vidIQ installed. This is one of my power tools. This is one thing that I absolutely love, and we'll revisit this shortly, but if you go to alanspicer.com forward slash vidIQ, you can download vidIQ for free, and if you choose to upgrade to their paid versions, then there's a 20% discount there, but you'll see some of the features and functionalities that I absolutely love there. Okay, so I've mastered the title. It's within 50 characters in length. Now, the description. This description needs to be at least a paragraph, if not two, spinning the concept of the title whilst being helpful. I always pad it out with phrases that you would also search for as a human being to find the answer to that question, especially on my how-tos. So you might actually just be looking for how to bold comments on YouTube, or how to italic comments on YouTube, or how to strike through comments on YouTube. So I need to weave those into the description, so therefore when you search for that, and you, you get that very specific answer to that very specific question, and it gives me a chance to rank specifically for that search term. Now here you can see the description that I've just written. How to write a bold italics and strike through comments on YouTube, that's the old title, the longer version of that search term, and then, Learn how to bold comments on YouTube, make comments italic on YouTube, and strike through comments on YouTube. You'll also notice that I put strike through as two separate words, just in case people type it wrong. Today we'll look at how you can make comments pop in YouTube video comments with bold, italic, and strike through comments. Now you can see there, I've twisted, I've spun, it's human, I've not keyword stuffed it, but it still reads, there's lots of rich content in there. That's a good solid, description at the start, and the first 173 characters, which is about possibly here, is what, when you search, there's 
it might start picking keywords out of in the search results for relevancy. Anything underneath supports the video, but doesn't necessarily show up immediately on the search results page. Now here, you'll see that I've got timestamps. This is part of my upload defaults, which you can set up by going to settings and upload. Basically, when I upload a video, it's pre-populated with some of this content. I'm sure if I've got a tutorial, I'll link it in the description or the iCard accordingly. Now the timestamps are important. Why? Because if you want to jump to a very specific part of the video, maybe you only want to bold or you only want to italicize, then you can jump to a very specific time stamp in that video. So what I do is I look at my timestamps, I name the first one, once again, some kind of spin of the title, how to bold italic strike through YouTube comments. Once again, still could have been a title, but is also now a possible keyword. And I've started it with zero dot dot zero zero. I will now play the mini video and start filling in the timestamps for relevant areas. Make your comments stand out. Bold, italics, underline, strike through, comments that pop, maybe even attract attention or even some subscribers. That's what we talk about today. Here we go. Now I'm just about to jump in to the tutorial. Okay. As you can see there, so that's the 12 second mark, okay? Now, I note that it's the tutorial in the timestamp. I go back down, I add another one, and I keep watching. Okay, so you want your comments to stand out in the video comment section. So you scroll down, you load the comment sections, and you to bold. Okay, now this one is to bold. So once again, it's got to 24, 25 seconds. I'm gonna write 24, and now I write how to bold a comment on YouTube, or in this case, how to bold text in YouTube comments. Once again, another phrase that you could have searched for maybe to find this specific skill. Now you'll see that the video is deliberately created with a five, six, seven, 10 second buffer at the end. The reason for this is at the end of the video, I can now push to a related video. So in this case, I'm going to push to something that, that makes your video better or gains more subscribers. Okay, now that means that the last five seconds of the video isn't necessarily relevant to the description. So I can either timestamp it outro, like I have done sometimes, or I use a tag that explains what it's pushing towards. So in this case, get more subscribers using this, for example. How to gain more subscribers. How to add a YouTube watermark, which will be the thing it's pushing towards. Next step, in my description, you'll see watch next. What I do here is I list something that is related or has been mentioned in the video. So this mentions adding a YouTube watermark. I go and get the link for my watermark video and I add it to my description. Why? Because sometimes people watch the video and you'll be amazed how many people also read the description. I suggest maybe one or two watch next videos, that way they can jump in, or you can do a playlist if it's relatable there. And then as you scroll down, you'll see that I've got to check out my blog. I have some hashtags. Now these hashtags are relevant to me and consistent, but I will change them out from time to time. So Alan starts creating YouTube certified how to education and vidIQ. Now these are things that are associated with me or my brand. Now in this case, I might also add YouTube comments or bold, for example. But if I was talking about subscribers or help, or if my video is about money and I'm talking about stock markets, then it could be stocks or stonks. And now at the bottom of the description, I have a few of my affiliate links. Here's my subscribe button for my channel. Here's watch my latest video. Here's my podcast. And here is a selection of affiliate links that I tend to find perform okay for me. For example, these are the overlays that pop up that say like or comment or a link to vidIQ, who I optimize my videos with, which I'll show you in a second, or a free audiobook, should you want to learn something for free. I also highly advise at the bottom that you have some kind of disclaimer if you're using affiliate links. This one says here, some of my links are affiliate links. These do not affect the price of the products or services referred to, but may offer commissions that are used to help me fund the free YouTube video tutorials on this channel. Thank you for your support. The reason for that is it needs to have some form of disclaimer so people don't assume that they're just random links. It covers your back and that way you don't get your videos removed for pushing people to affiliate links without disclosure. Next, you're looking at thumbnails. Now, 
I'll be honest, I've been lazy. I've not made a thumbnail for this one yet. So I'm going to sub in a thumbnail that I've just used recently. Have a look at this one, for example, download videos on mobile. Now, this is very important, and this is a vidIQ tool. The point of a thumbnail, the point of a thumbnail is to stand out to make them stop scrolling, and then two, make them click. Make it clear, concise, make them fully aware of what that video is about and to draw them in. Now on the right hand side, underneath the little preview, there is this tool here. What search terms do you want to rank for? Now this isn't about the ranking of your video. This is about how your video would look when ranking with your thumbnail. This way you can preempt what your video looks like compared to your rivals and stand out. That's how I've increased my click through rate from seven or eight percent this time last year to 11, 12% because I've been able to disrupt the pattern of what my thumbnail looks like compared to everybody else's. So I want to rank for bold comments on YouTube, for example. I click preview and now this wonderful tool will now show me what my video would look like against others that are ranking for that term but what their thumbnails would look like. Once again, this thumbnail happens to be a, a placeholder, right? But if you imagine that, that it says bold italic strike through comments, and I've got some kind of example, you can now see above, that's a red and white, it's kind of, the text is kind of small, my text would be huge, I've got some kind of emotive face or an arrow. That video got 14,000 views in 10 months. The video underneath, 146,000 views in three years, but has no thumbnail. It's just a screenshot of a mobile phone. Here, there's lots of text, loads of icons, 5,000 views in three years. Underneath that one's a little bit better. YouTube video, bold comments, and then what looks like possibly Hindi, and it's pointing at the thing. But once again, it's not huge, it's not pointing, it's not massive, okay? 2,000 views in two years, and these retitled it to 2020, tut tut. This one's a little bit better. Comments, bold, italics, more, 66,000 views in four years. What I'm learning there is that none of those videos are new because they're either, they're the oldest one there, the youngest one there is 10 months old. So I could jump in there and possibly steal that away with a really good thumbnail that pops, that stands out, right? And a video that delivers the quality and the answer that they need, not only in the title, the description, but in the thumbnails as well. So once again, bad example, I'm using a placeholder thumbnail, but hopefully as you scroll through here, you can see that mine it's a little bit more of a human element, a little bit more professional. You've got the red, black, white, you've got my and you've got the big text. You'll immediately see what that video is about. So once again, I'll redesign this, but as an example, you can see what it looks like. Now, I can see what it looks like on desktop. You can see what it looks like on a tablet, and I can see what it looks like on a mobile phone. And now I can also see what it would look like against my rival videos on a home screen as well. Once again, all of these little texts, here's the tablet and here's my search screen. Hopefully you would see that thumbnail and be willing to stop. You can keep going back and going to the title, how to bold comments on YouTube, and I can keep seeing how it would look against my rivals. And if I don't like it, it can continue to tweak and twist. You'll see as well with the new phrase, how to bold comments, it's also showing me how it would highlight it here. How to write bold, how to bold YouTube, how to bold comments on YouTube. There you go. So all of that is here. And once again, it gets my rivals. That's a, a mobile phone. That happens to be a, a screen that the text is a little bit too small. Mine would still stand out. Now, scrolling down, playlists. Always make sure that you're putting it in some kind of playlist. That way people can continue to roll into your content. Now, mine are all tutorials, so I have tutorials set up. The important, is it made for kids? Yes or no? Yes, am I playing with kids' toys? No. Is it for an adult? So not made for kids. Age restriction, there's, there's no swearing, there's no inappropriate content, there's no blood, there's no guts, there's no gore, so I don't need to do that. Paid promotion, is there a video, is there something in there that I'm promoting? Hi, buy this thing, YouTube sent me that. No, it's just me teaching people, okay? So I don't need to tick this, but if there is a clear, here, Elogato sent me, then, then yes. Now I've got some preset tags in here. These are from my default upload. Now I'm gonna leave these be, and we'll do the tags very shortly. But next, I click next, monetization. Do I wanna monetize? 
Yes, so I click on what type of ads do I want? Overlays, the little ones that pop up here. Sponsored cards, if I click the eye cards and there's something relevant, maybe I, I mentioned Harry Potter, so they want to put a film up here for you to watch and buy. Skippable ads, the ones at the start. Non-skippable ads, the ones that force you to watch it for uh, two minutes or whatever it happens to be. You can choose those accordingly. Now also, depending on the length of the video, if your video is over eight minutes, you can add pre-roll, mid-rolls, and post rolls. Pre roll before the video, mid roll, somewhere in the middle of that video, an advert can play. So say something really, really important, and then ta da, and there's an advert. You can break up your content accordingly. And post roll, the video plays all the way through, and then it'll play a video. If you want to maximize your earnings, you turn all of these on. If you're worried about the behavior of people watching longer form content and you don't want to place an advert every 10 minutes or five minutes or two minutes, then you can remove the mid rolls or you turn the mid rolls on and you allow YouTube to figure that out themselves where they'll put it in an appropriate position that doesn't harm the behavior of your channel. Next, ad suitability. This is your way, your mea culpa, you, you admitting that the video is good or bad, right? Don't lie here, because YouTube will figure it out. Basically, you scroll down here and you, you're you honest. So you can see here, keep up the good work. It looks like you filled up this questionnaire accurately. Basically, I've been honest. As a result, we're using your input to determine whether or not your content is advertiser friendly. Your input is helping us monetize. View my ratings, for example. I've said over and over again that my content is monetizable and good. Why? Because it is, I'm not being silly. And I reviewed them all on my desktop, which I'll show you very shortly how to do. If I was to lie and there'd be something in there that's demonetizable, they would flag it and my trustworthiness would drop down. Now, say I was swearing, I'd go to inappropriate language. If it's light, say for ads, okay? If it's strong, uh, it's limited a little bit. And if it's extreme, yeah. Now you'll notice that if it's light ads, everything's fine, you still get premium. But if it's extreme, you would possibly risk getting a yellow icon. Now scrolling down, adult content, sexual behavior, romance, kissing, discussion. This is truly, you go through every fine detail and be honest, okay? Violence, edited, unedited, graphic, by law, raw footage, shocking content. Like are you going out of your way to deliberately shock people? Harmful, dangerous, drugs, hateful comment, derogatory comment, firearms, sensitive events, controversial issues. Now if you feel that none of those are relevant to you, then click none of the above, that's what I do, 98% of the time, and click next. And now it gives you the option to add in screens, but I do that in my edit page along with my info cards, okay? Click next. I can choose to make it private, unlisted, members only, or public, or schedule the video. If you want to learn how to schedule a video, it'd be in the iCard. I tend to leave mine private for now, and I click save, and I go to content, and the video is here. Right now, once again, this is a standing thumbnail. And now, I start with the important stuff, the tags, the end screens and stuff like that. So now I hop in and I start working on my tags. Now, because I've taken some time to pay attention to my title and use the keywords that I'm focusing on, you'll notice that vidIQ has now started to populate some of the keywords that I might want to use up here. Now, it's also suggesting them here as well, at the top of the description. What this is, is part of the boost system, it looks at all of the tags and the descriptions and it tries to recommend phrases that you need to sneak in, that you could use as tags, as you could use descriptions, that kind of thing. What I also do is, to, is take this as an advantage to start spinning in this, my second paragraph with these phrases in. Now, I take a while with these and I'll craft them carefully. Now, this is where it gets a little bit clunky and you need to work on it over and over to make sure that it's a, a more human sentence. But as you can see, I've, I've started here and this is the, only the first pass. I'll do it more and more, right? But I've started to eliminate some of the keywords up here. Consider including these highly searched keywords in your description. Now, you've noticed I've knocked off a couple from up here. And as I scroll down to my tags, I can then start adding very similar into my tag box. Now I'm going to remove ones here that aren't relevant, auto filled in ones from my upload defaults, but I now click the boost this video. What I now do is I start echoing the ones that were up above. How to bold comments on YouTube. I'll put the title in the tags as well. Right, what this does is it starts to prime vidIQ's tool down below for all of the key phrases that it likes. And when I've refreshed it, it's now bringing these back up, okay, which I can add 
very nicely, very quickly by adding them here. Bold, italics, comments, strike through, how to format your comments. Now what you're looking for here is a mix, a semantic widening. You, you think of how someone would search, how to bold a comment, how to make a comment bold, YouTube comments bold, make it comments bold, right? These are all a semantic search and you need to fill the tags so that YouTube over time can understand and weave that web that all of these words are relevant. Once you've added a load, you can always refresh it once again. Now you can do this manually without a vidIQ thing, by the way, just for reference, but you have to do a lot of the thinking outside the box and it may take a little longer. This takes a lot of the guesswork out of it for you and it even gives you kind of a score now I tend to advise that you these aren't gospel. It doesn't mean that you get a hundred, you, you get a score with a hundred and it's going to ping and immediately go viral, right? But this will help you understand how to dive into certain things and then it will slowly train your brain. Sometimes if I've got the time, I'll actually manually search for every single one and curate them myself. Or if I'm a rush, I jump down like boom, 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 and I fill up the 500 character limit. Now I've got to 501 out of 500 here. So in some cases I'll remove my name or I'll remove ones that aren't relevant. I'll go back through and I'll keep, you know, flicking through. But once I'm comfortable and I feel that all of those tags there are relevant to me, then that's those tags done. But that doesn't mean that I'm done looking at those tags in future, right? I can always go back, refresh the tags, see what other ones are relevant, or I can search by overall school, keyword volume, or competition. And you can always come back and change those as the video launches. Language, English, United Kingdom. Once again, set it to the, the language that it happens to be. Title in the description is English. You once again, you can change what it happens to be. Has this been shown on TV? 98% of people have, don't have to touch this. Recording location, video location, and license. Now the license, basically what this means is if it's a YouTube license, then it, it's all yours and only you use it unless you give permission and then you can claim against other people if they use your video. If you use Creative Commons license, what this means is that as long as they use your name, they can do whatever they want with that video. They can make a compilation video with it. Good example of this is the Vlog Brothers make all of their videos Creative Commons, but that also means that they can't go out and claim as many of those with copyright claims to, to monetize. Distribution anywhere, everywhere. If you only want to show on platforms that are monetized, then you only show them on platforms that are monetized everywhere, everywhere else. This basically means if someone embeds it on Twitter and it can't show an advert, then yes, it will stop it. Category, mine's education. This doesn't tend to make a huge difference. I've got a video in one of the iCards explaining why you'd pick a category, but it's just to give that little small piece of data to the data processor to, to help you once again uh, build up that soup as your channel grows. Comments, do you want to potentially hold harmful comments, I would advise yes. And then how would you like to sort those comments normally by top? And once again, if you want to add a fundraiser, if you, if this is gonna be a, a charity video, then you can add a fundraiser. Once again, I've got a tutorial in the iCard for this. Next important thing is the end screen. Click on end screen and I get to choose my elements. Now, what you're looking at is the last 20 seconds of the video right, and where you can overlay. And because I gave myself that last five seconds, that's where I put mine, because it's a minimum of five seconds. So I click play. At the point that I start talking, I, I make a mental note, okay, or I leave it there, and then I pull in the cards that I want to use. I always advise that you have at least one subscribe button and at least one video. Whether it's the best viewed, whether it's suggested, or whether you're pointing to a set video, that's completely up to you. But you need to have something that you're funneling to. If it's completely blank, then if 40% of the people get to the end of your video, you're just leaving them hanging. But if you explain to them that you loved this, you'll love that one, there's a chance that they'll jump over to that video as well. Now, unfortunately, I timed it just a tiny bit wrong. So the last five seconds isn't five seconds, right? So you'll see here that it just overlaps just a little bit at the end of the tutorial. No harm. Okay because it now starts here, right? I've pulled some end screens from my previous video, so best four and a playlist here, and then I'm going to edit them specifically based on what Alan in this video now says. He using that to attract attention, here's other ways to get subscribers. So now it's gonna be other ways to get subscribers. So I might use a playlist here, so I search for subscribers, and then my channel name, because for whatever reason, you can't seem to search playlist based solely on 
your channel. And then I'm going to do here, I've got a playlist here of how to get um, subscribers in 2020. I'm gonna to push towards that one in this example. And I'm still gonna leave the best for viewer there. Why? Because the algorithm is going to be, serve them a video that might be more relevant for them and their viewing behavior recently. And now I click save. Remember to add eye cards if you can. If you're pushing towards something that is relevant, once again, at the end of this video, I talk about videos that might get you more views, then I'm gonna add an eye card here. And once again, it's going to be the subscriber one that I, I, I found earlier. Once again, I'm gonna search for subscribers and then Alan, because I know that that's the name of my, my playlist. YouTube, please update this, by the way. And then I'll have an iCard, and then I've got some kind of teaser here. Please change this to something that is a hook, not just the name of the playlist. The top one is the custom message that displays underneath the iCard when they click on it, and the bottom one is the one that pops up in the top right-hand corner that hooks them in. Want more subscribers? Want to see my car? That kind of thing. And then I click Save. Now your video is ready to go live, so make sure that once it is live, you comment on your video at the top and you pin it, that way they engage. This is a question or an action. In this case, it's a question about tax, but I also, in some cases, push them towards a video that I've recommended or I ask them some kind of uh, conversation starter. Why? Because this is the first push towards interaction. Commenting means interaction. Interaction means behavioral metrics. Behavioral metrics means that you have a chance of breaking out in the YouTube algorithm. You're engaging with a video, you want to leave a comment. This is how you can leave the best comment possible. Maybe you're new to YouTube and you're just dabbling your feet in to experience the atmosphere. So it's back to basics. How to comment on YouTube videos on desktop and mobile. Now some of you that watch this channel may already know how to log in and how to upload, but you've got to remember that all of us started from the basics at some point. So I'm going to cover a few basics in the next few videos and there's no more basic than how to comment. You want to be part of the community, you want to chime in, you want to give your opinion, you want to disagree, you want to agree. For you to do that you're going to need to comment. Sometimes it's not as easy as you may think. Now first of all you need to make sure that you have a YouTube account, there is a video up here, but then you need to find where you comment. Let's go to the computer. Now commenting on videos is more complex than you happen to think. Now, when you're commenting on videos, what you should really be doing is finding the video that you like, scrolling down to the comment section at the bottom, you'll see that it loads on a desktop version, and you'll see a little comment section here that says add public comments. Now, what you should be thinking about is also what type of comment you're going to leave. Normally, I suggest that you leave something that refers to the video. Are they talking about how to delete your channel. Are they talking about how they vlog, what they're doing that day? So make sure that you comment something about that video. I'm chiming in saying I will never delete my channel. So I click comment. You'll see that it pops up, it's now down at the bottom, but you can also interact with things. So if someone's asking you a question, so in my case, I've got a pinned one here, why are you deleting your channel? Then answer the question. Maybe interact, tell someone in that video what they're doing wrong, what they're doing right, what you like about the video, what you don't like about the video. Now to do the same on a mobile phone, you load up the video that you want to see, you watch your video, you're happy with the video, now you scroll down. On a mobile phone, it takes you a little bit further to scroll down because all of the suggested videos are actually underneath the video. But when you scroll down and scroll down long enough, you'll see that there once again is an add public comment section. So you click there, you type your message that you wish to send, you click comment, and you are done. You really love the channel, you love the video, and you want to subscribe. And for you to get the most out of the YouTube experience, you want to start collating, curating your own collections, your own playlists. And the best way to do that is subscribing to channels. You know, that button that's underneath the video, the big red one that says subscribe, if you, if you click on that one. You then get my videos all the time put into your subscribed lists. But Maybe you want a little bit more in-depth tutorial. Let's go to the computer. Okay, so you found a new channel that you really, really love and you want to subscribe to, but you're not quite sure how. Now, what you do is you go to one of their videos or you go to their channel, but let's say you've randomly stumbled across one of their videos. Now, once you watch their video, you'll be able to scroll down and underneath the video, it will give you their channel name, their video description, and you'll see here, a big red button that says subscribe. Now, to subscribe, you simply click the subscribe button. Now, you'll notice that once it's subscribed, that it will pan out and it'll give you the options to turn on notifications as well, or it may suggest other channels for you to subscribe to above as recommendations. You simply click the subscribe buttons there. 
Now, if you're on mobile phone, it's very much the same. You go to their video, you enjoy their video, you scroll down and there will be a button. If you're not already subscribed to their channel that says subscribe, you click that button, it changes, and you may get the option to turn on notifications. And there you go, you've subscribed to their channel using a mobile phone as well. Maybe you're going traveling and you want to download a video so you can watch it whilst you're on the go. How to download videos on YouTube. YouTube Shorts, videos on mobile, videos themselves, or even a playlist for when you're traveling. Let's get into it. Now YouTube Shorts are becoming more and more prominent. You can even place them on your own channel homepage. They get their own shelf and you can scroll through them. When you click on them, they will auto-play. People always ask me if it's too late to start a YouTube channel. Now, you can see their description, but you have problems downloading them. There's, There's two ways you can do this, on desktop and mobile. Now, YouTube Shorts in the UK and most of the Western world have to be uploaded as standard videos and then tagged with the word Shorts. For more information on this, I've done a video of everything you need to know about YouTube Shorts. But let's go to content, scroll down and find a YouTube short you wish to download. This one is my latest one, for example. I then click the three arrows and click download. Then loads down here in the compressed format that it uploads to YouTube. You now have a copy on your desktop that you can use anywhere you want, including Reel and TikToks. Now on mobile, you'll need to identify the YouTube short that you want. So go to videos. In my case, I scroll down to say this one. So as you can see, it's been uploaded as a standard video, just like you would any other way. And more importantly, you see this little arrow here that says download, and it will download it to your mobile phone. In this case, my settings say Wi-Fi only, but you can set it to using your own settings, whether it's Wi-Fi or mobile data, but it will save it to your phone, and then you can do whatever you want with that. Upload it to TikTok, share it on Instagram Reels, that kind of thing. Now let's have a look at full length videos. There could be many reasons why you want to download a video. Maybe you just want to back up, maybe you want to edit it, maybe you want to add it as some kind of B-roll. If you go to your avatar in the top right hand corner and click YouTube Studio, it will load you into your dashboard. You know, the thing that basically gives you an overview of your channel. If you click on videos and then scroll down to any video that takes your eye and click the little three dots, you'll see the option of download. Now you simply click download and it will download a compressed version of your video. I say that, remember it's compressed, so you may have uploaded in 4K, but it will download it in a compressed version, a much smaller file. This is normally 1280 by 760, or very similar, basically the step just before full HD. Now remember, you can't legally download anybody else's videos, but you can download them onto your mobile phone using YouTube Premium. It used to be known as YouTube Red, but basically if you go onto your phone, you find a video that you want, and there's a little download button. This then downloads it onto your phone, so when you're out of service area, when you're out of either 4G, 5G, Wi-Fi, that kind of thing, you can then watch this video. I know a load of creators that like to download a load of them so they've got a load of stuff to binge on the airplane when their signal's a bit spotty or they don't have international data. Or just generally listen to something. This is how you download music from YouTube. Music, there's so much on YouTube and Maybe you want to download it to put it in your own videos. That's what we talk about today. Here we go. Downloading music on YouTube is easy and you can do it for free. Sign into your dashboard, scroll down onto the left hand side, all the way down to audio library. Here you have a wide selection of free music that you can download at any point, put into any projects, maybe even listen to whilst meditating or studying. You can track it by mood, genre, artist, duration. From the drop down here, you can search, you know, track title, genre, mood, artist. So say mood, and then I choose happy, click apply. Now all of these are happy, and you can see when they were added recently. You can sample them by clicking play. And whenever you are ready, you simply click download and it is done. Put all these videos into a playlist 
and download the playlist in one go. You're on the go and you want to download a playlist of songs or videos that you'd like to binge whilst you're out and about. It's much simpler than you think. So here is how you can download a playlist onto your mobile phone. Okay, so you launch the YouTube app, you go to the channel that you want to download a playlist from, or if you've got your own playlist, you would go to your channel, click on playlists, find the playlist that you want to download. So in this case, I'm gonna use the ugly truth about YouTube. And then there is a little download icon right there in which if you click it, it will tell you that it's being downloaded. The little circle icon goes round and round. And when you are done, you will find it under library, downloads, and you'll see it there, downloading 10, 11, 12%. And when you are ready, that will now be available offline so you can play it without any data. So what you can do is make an entire playlist of your favourite songs or your favourite motivational things, download it, and you're off to the races. You want to watch a video over and over and over and over and over again. Maybe you're learning the lyrics, maybe you're annoying your neighbours. This is how you can loop a video. You've got a video that you really love, a video that you have to play over and over and over again. Maybe you've got a five-year-old that needs to watch the baby shark 50 billion times, or you just have something that you'd like to listen to whilst you're at the gym relaxing, or you want to listen to over and over again to soak in the knowledge. This is how you loop a video. Load the video that you want to loop, right click, click loop, and then when it gets to the end of the video, any other video. It's not here just yet, it is coming very soon. So hit subscribe and I'll see you soon. The ugly truth about making money on YouTube. And it loops for you automatically. Now you can do the same on a mobile phone by going to the little three dots in the top right hand corner, clicking loop, it will loop. And ta-da! Isn't it annoying when your video buffers and you, you constantly have to wait for it and it ruins your experience? This is how you can make sure that buffering is no longer a problem. There is nothing more annoying than a video stopping, stammering and buffering. This is how you can fix it very quickly on desktop and mobile. Are you struggling with buffering? Are you struggling with your video loading? Maybe it's stuttering and stopping halfway through. Not a problem. You can change the quality in which the video is displayed by going down to the cog, picking quality, and then switching. Now, this is set to auto. It will have a look at your bandwidth and it will see how you are coping. I tend to advise that unless you're really looking for high definition, crispy edges, that you can go down to 720, even 480. If you're only listening to the video in itself, 144 may not look sexy, right? But it loads much the faster. Tab. Now, something I've, I've used sporadically. So therefore, if you are simply listening to it in another room and you want to save on bandwidth or you want it to load really quickly, 144 is fine. If you want to watch it without it being all blurry, even 480 is fine. Once again, reloading, that looks perfectly fine. Now to mobile. Find the video that you are looking to watch. In the top right hand corner you've got your three dots and then you'll see the same options here when it comes to quality. And on mobile you can choose between auto, higher quality, data saver, which is lower, or you can click advanced. And here is where you get to see the same options that you might get to see on a desktop. 2160 is effectively 4K, 1440p is the kind of step between, 1080 is HD, and then all the way down here. Now if you're on a mobile device, even all the way down to 240. It's very it's great. Real, it doesn't look we can too file bad. For deductible. Are you in a situation where you can't listen to the video but you want to read it? This is how you can turn subtitles on. You want to read along with me. Maybe you can't listen to me, but you still want to watch the videos. This is how you turn on the subtitles here so you can read as we watch or turn them off if they're annoying. You are looking to turn on or turn off the captions that pop up on your video. Here, for example, this is what captions do. They pop up at the bottom of your screen telling you exactly what this hairy dude is saying. This could be very helpful in learning a language or watching a video when you haven't necessarily listened to it. How do you turn them on or turn them off? On desktop, it's simple. Go down to the little captions option and you can click on it. If it's underlined in red, it's on. And if it's not underlined in red, it is off. You can also change the language by clicking the cog, choosing the subtitles, and it's English 
or auto-generated English, for example, this one. But in future, there could be other options for other languages as well. For mobile, it's pretty similar. You go to the top right-hand corner, you'll see a little icon that says CC. It now says subtitles turned on. And then when you play said video... Creative on yeah. what is a business sure, expense. Sure. It displays the text underneath. You really love the video, it's time to share it with other people. Now, you might be a little bit new around here, new to the whole YouTube experience, and you wanna share a video with a friend. Funny cat video, man falling downstairs, hairy handsome guy teaching you how to share videos, something like that. But you wanna learn how to share a video using your mobile phone or a desktop computer. So, let's go to the computer and let me show you. Okay, so here you are, and you're looking to share somebody's video. You really like the video, you decided that it's informed you enough that you really want to share it out to someone, but you're not quite sure how to do it. Now you scroll down to underneath the video, there is a share button. When you click share, it will pop up with a few options. In this case, you can either embed it into your own website, you can share it to Twitter, Dig, Tumblr, VK, you can pin it on Pinterest, Mix, Google, which Google Plus, I believe, is going to be removed very, very soon. Facebook, Blogger, Reddit, or email. Or you can copy just the URL of the video and copy it there. If you have a community tab on your own YouTube channel, you can create a post and you can share it that way as well. Now, on a mobile phone, what you do is very similar. You scroll past the video that has engaged you. There is a share option, you click share. Now on a mobile phone, it's slightly different because it will only really give you the option to share it to networks that you've already kind of engaged in. There may still be the option to share to Mix and Google Plus and Facebook, but mostly it interacts with your own phone OS. So if you're on an iPhone, for example, there will be Facebook, but there'll also be WhatsApp and things like that as well. If you need more help with YouTube features, there is a playlist here. Hit subscribe for regular YouTube tricks and tip tutorials. Hit the notification icon so you're alerted every time these videos go live. Go out there, start creating.